So good morning, good afternoon, good evening, buenos dias, buenas tardes, buenas noches. Thank you so much for joining us in the Marketplace Room for Youth Engagement. As you know, this Marketplace is one of the most interactive events of the summit, as we will be listening to stories, ideas, and projects that organizations around the world have implemented during the COVID-19 pandemic. We encourage you all to actively participate, ask questions, and share ideas with our presenters. Participants' microphones are currently muted, but please use the chat box to type your questions and comments during the presentations. If time allows, we will also open the mic for a couple of people to participate after each session. In the meantime, you can send questions through the chat. Our first, present our first presentation will be from IFMSA, YoungFPA and Prezi, who will kick off these room sessions, followed by Profamilia, and last but not least, we will have Grassroots Soccer. I will be sharing a bit more about our speakers before each session, so without further hand it over to Egle Jad Janusunait and Sat Wakas, Lea is an officer for SRHR and student organizations respectively from the IFMSA, and Irem Turner, focal point for youth participation and, part, and sorry, youth leadership and participation from Young FPA, who will be sharing hashtag youth against COVID-19. Over to you, uh, Irem. Hi everyone, thank you for having us on the Marketplace session. Uh, we're really excited to be here. I'm just gonna kick off and I wanted to actually um, share a 30 second video that sums up the campaign before saying anything more. So I'll share my screen and you can let me know if it works. Young people are leading the charge against COVID-19. They're creating videos to teach others how to protect themselves and how to take action. Over 100 videos have been created in more than 20 years. Son afectados las y los... And viewed hundreds of thousands of times. Oh no. And it's a thousand times. My internet is not corporate. Uh, goals on that campaign have been used a thousand times. We views since the start of the pandemic. I just want to give if you go on Zoom, you'll be able to post. Um, from that you yeah, we're having some issues. Um, Hi. Yeah. Um, okay, I'm, I'll just I'm go recording. on and let's yeah. go. Yeah. And young people all around the world, um, your voice can make a difference. Join the youth against COVID-19. And it's like, yeah. I think that maybe if you, if you don't use the video. Okay. You, yeah. Can you hear me well now? Yeah, it's much better now. <laughs> okay, sorry, I already lost my two minutes. I'll briefly tell you. So at the start of this pandemic, um, as UNFPA, um, one of our biggest engagements on the youth front was risk, risk community engagement. And our sitting off point was that young people were taking action against COVID-19. Um, so what we did was to produce pain with customizable camps. Um, young people and different youth organizations, the ability to translate and adapt all this content for themselves using the technology of Prezi video. So in general, this was a partnership between youth-led organizations such as IFMSA that is going to be presenting um, our technology partner from the private sector, Prezi, and UNFPA um, as an international 
international organization. So over the course of this campaign, we have actually um, uh, six different these six episodes more than 200 times. Um, and there have been more than basically from the first videos that we released in five languages, over 200 videos in all regions, 30 languages. Is this better? Oh, I'm really sorry for the technical problems. Can you hear me well now? Yeah, it is better now. It okay, is. perfect. So I think about visuals. So basically what I was saying is that together with you, okay, with you that are pain, uh, which was six episodes long, and this campaign tackled everything from things like what is COVID to mental health, sexual and reproductive health and rights, gender inequality, and other things related to um, the campaign. We lost your audio, Emma. Yeah, can someone from the iPhone say jump in and continue the presentation? Yes, definitely. Can you hear me well? Yeah. Okay. Um, I hope yes. it's also okay. So um, just to sum up briefly what Iram has been talking about, um, basically the idea of the campaign was to have customizable videos that could be recreated by anyone who would like to continue with the campaign. So there have been scripts that youth organizations have drafted. And after that, we have created the videos with changing slides that anyone who could go on the video could actually go and recreate it, uh, push the button, and just redo the whole video from themselves. So right now, I think you might also be seeing in the screen all the young people, some of the young people, actually not all, who have used this feature to redo the video that we have drafted with other youth organizations. Um, and so continuing, um, I realized I didn't introduce myself. So my name is Agla and I'm a medical student from Lithuania, currently lies an officer for SRHR of IFMSA, representing more than 1.3 million medical students worldwide. And I have worked in this project together with UNFPA and two of my colleagues, Tad and Omnia. So um, this campaign in the video format was a really new and innovative concept for us. And it had this element of excitement because we knew when we were drafting the videos that it would be something very dynamic. It wouldn't be just a video that's done and it's there. It would be something that would be reused by other young people, uh, which would be shared in their own communities. So in these videos, we have covered six topics in total. So we have worked with a number of inputs from different young partners. And it was really great to have such a diversity of views. Um, from people coming from diverse backgrounds and tackling these perspectives uh, of COVID-19. Um, what was also really great uh, was that the project did not shy away from topics that were sometimes avoided in the general public, such as exercising sexual and reproductive health and rights, including safe sexual practices during the pandemic. Other topics that we have covered also included mental health, one-on-one introduction to COVID-19, role of young people and are young people impacted in COVID-19, also the view of the pandemic through gender lens. Um, from IFMSC side, the campaign was really inspirational because it was a great way to find the misinformation as well as providing risk communication for young people. And it actually has inspired us to place health literacy as a cornerstone in our own organization and to conduct another survey in collaboration with WHO to identify fact-checking organizations worldwide. So uh, in total, this campaign was fully youth-led with young people taking um, seats at the table and coordinating the campaign at every part of it. And it was really incredible to see how empowering it was and how many people shared the videos. So to name some of the numbers for you to see the impact of the campaign. So in total, we had 119 videos recreated by young people. The total views of our hashtag youth against COVID-19 was almost 20,000. The number of hits on in the press videos was almost 15,000. And we had about 20 languages that videos were translated to. So originally we provided scripts that were translated already to five languages, but along the way, more young people joined in and offered to translate um, the scripts into their own native languages so that we can reach more people. 
and the total visits on the campaign site, its own website, was almost 5,000 views. Um, so from here, I will hand on to my colleague, Sad, to also provide some more information to you. Thank you very much, Irem. Can you see me? Or can you see me and my screen, I guess? So hello, everyone. And as I always say, when it comes to changing the world, it always starts with small and collective steps. And this was our vision in the campaign. So basically, what we focused on is inclusiveness and trying to have as many people as we can from different countries as we can, from different backgrounds, different languages. And that was our aim in the campaign. And this is why we chose Prezi. This is why we chose videos because it has the option and the possibility of youth and everyone uh, stepping in and uh, watching the video and taking it and creating the video. And I guess this is how the video likes. You appear as a person and then next to you, you have the visuals that are moving, which creates an interactiveness and engagement of uh, people who are watching the videos. So basically, we wanted to ensure participation, and this is what we worked on. As Eglis said, we had more than 20 languages uh, from different countries, more than 40 countries engagements. So that shows that it went viral and it reached multiple people. And the aim that we had also is to have young people share this in their communities. And those messages not only relate to young people, but also to their surroundings, how they can behave, how they can tackle COVID, how they can tackle their uh, sexual and reproductive health, their daily life, their wellness and well-being. So this was the focus of the video. So basically, uh, this was our innovative uh, touch, let's say, of the campaign. And yeah, we try to include as much youth as possible and to ensure collaboration and participation. So in general, that's a uh, quick summary of the actions that we did. We had six episodes, as it was said before, and it was accessible uh, for all people to uh, openly share. I'll also drop in the chat uh, the link of the Prezi video or the page where you can go and see the videos. So if you go to that link that I just shared in the chat, basically anyone can see the videos and anyone can recreate the videos. So that's a message for you today as you are watching this, not only to watch, but to take the lead. And this is what we want here. Everyone taking the lead and then sharing the videos with their communities in your own language, in your own dialect, and you can go ahead and do that. And what we did also is we provided scripts written in different languages. So you can go and read and express yourself and deliver those key messages. So that was, uh, in brief, some of the actions that we had in the video uh, or in the campaign. And uh, moving next, I would like to talk a little bit about what uh, would be next or what would follow up in the next uh, part of the campaign. And this is very important because we believe that, okay, we had given a chance and the platform for different young people to express themselves, but we are wanting more people to express themselves. So what we're doing, and of course, the International Youth Day is uh, just next month, we are coming up with short templates of 30 seconds, one minute, where all people, where all young people can express themselves and uh, challenge their surroundings to express themselves as well, where you can film yourself with Prezi. We are developing a technology also that can be used in your phones uh, easily, also to be accessible for uh, low, uh, lo low income countries, for example, and places where people lack good internet access and connection. So that's also has been taken into consideration. And those short videos will be a space for youth to say their voice, to say what, how COVID has effect, uh, affected them, to say how they are uh, doing their daily life and coping with COVID and what they want their stakeholders to do for them what they want in the future so that we in international youth they can share this and can share our messages and can share the voice of youth and say that okay this is what we want and this is what we have as young people so that's the general aim of the campaign so you have the link in Brazil. make sure to follow us and of course uh engage in the campaign and expect the upcoming uh, episodes and upcoming engagements in the next weeks. So that's from my side. And again, th uh, feel free to engage with us with questions. If you want to 
ask if you want to engage feel free to ask and thank you for your attention Thank you so much for your presentation, Saad, um, Egle, and also Irem. If you have any questions, please feel free to type them on the chat box. We have four minutes more for this presentation. So... David, just as that is happening, maybe if you can see me now, I could just um, say hello and say a few words from UNFPA. Um, I think Saad and Egle already shared the campaign to perfection, so maybe a few reflections. Um, from our side as UNFPA is to say that um, this is a proof of concept for us to show that it is possible to work in a collaborative fashion and put young people as the ones to create the content and also disseminate this from start to finish. So from concept development and choosing which subjects to work on to actual uh, script development to content production to translations, um, we actually work together with youth and organizations such as IFMSA. Um, and we hope that we'll be able to actually have similar campaigns um, in the you know, upcoming months, years as well. I think for any partners that are thinking of adapting such new technologies or having such a collaborative approach, one thing I would say is that this also requires a lot of dedicated time and energy and coordination from all partners. Um, so it might sometimes take a little bit longer or require more coordination than anything that you release unilaterally. But overall, with the take up of it, with the number of partners that we have, we have found it to be an excellent way to collaborate from start to finish and make sure that we're not doing top to bottom uh, public health communication, but allowing young people to actually express it um, in a way that fits their reality. So thank you to all the partners. And I see some of the um, things here. So if you, any of the um, ones that are curious uh, click on this website link that Saad shared. You can actually see all of the episodes. We have already had half a million views, and this has been launched in all regions where UNFA is active through many youth organizations and UNFA country offices. So this has been going on for a few months now. Thank you. Wonderful. Anything else, Segle, Saad? Yeah, maybe to step up and answer some of the questions that were maybe uh, asked. So the question by Fran about uh, the videos being open to public, of course, and this is our mission here, is to offer public access, public engagement for anyone everywhere in the world. So you can go to the link, you can choose an episode, and there is the recycle button, which you can click, and then you can start and go ahead and film your own video. And yeah, this is what's really special about this initiative is that it's really simple to engage with and you can start even now. And I, as I always say, and I, as I said in the beginning, everyone can be a hero and everyone can make change. So yeah, that's maybe some of the ideas I wanted to share. Another question, maybe what are the next steps beyond proof of concepts? So as I said, for the next steps, we're planning to make more engaging videos, more shorter videos where people get to express themselves even more. And maybe Iram and Egli, if they have more uh, reflections to share on that, you can go ahead and step for sure. So uh, there is a question also, where were there any major, uh, sorry, were there any major challenges with the campaign? So yeah, maybe Iram, you wanna share some comments on that or Egli? Um, I can try to reply to two of the questions there. So in terms of fact checking, we actually had a script um, that was vetted by UNFPA and this script was translated to every single language that is available on the website as well. So obviously we can't fact check and make sure that every single 300 video there is um, according to the script. And this is a disclaimer on the website as well. But we try to give everyone the tools and the right information um, to actually record the videos uh, with the help of the script. Um, and in terms of the challenges, I think the three challenges I would highlight are one, um, with any new technology, there is a lot of like uptake and hand holding that you need to make at first. So I think it would have been a lot easier if we just said, let's release one video from a UNFPA account. But I think overall, if you also see this as a new tool that you're providing to young people, I think it is worth the learning curve. Um, another thing is to obviously translate this into um, settings where they don't have internet access, cameras are not um, very feasible. 
And for that, we saw many UNFPA country offices and youth partners um, actually come up with different formats. Um, so they applied, used the scripts and did this on WhatsApp, or they did um, TV or radio programs using the scripts. So we are not super adamant about crazy video being the only medium. Thank you. Wonderful. Sorry, it was a few seconds. No worries. Perfect timing, considering the tech difficulties. Um, so yeah, thank you so much, Egle, Irem, and Sat, for this great presentation and this session. Um, I, I there's a video of me actually on the Prezi website that we, using the the first uh, the first template. So yes, I encourage you to use it. It's very interactive and very simple to use. I am now very happy to introduce Marta Royo, Executive Director from Pro Familia, who will be sharing Brave at Home: Integral Education for Sexuality During COVID Pandemics, and their experience around this in Colombia. Over to you, Marta. Um, hi, good morning, everybody. I am Marta. I know that you were expecting a younger person to do this presentation. However, language is still a barrier here in Colombia. And this is the younger we could get <laughs> that could speak English in this, in this event. But thank you so much. What I'm proposing to you to do in order, with, I have been having some interference with the video and sound and not taking into account that uh, we have very uh, little time. I'm going to turn on my video so we don't have any problems and uh, share the presentation with you. So, Valiente, brave in English. What is Valiente? Valiente is a program uh, that we developed together with the Canadian Embassy in Colombia, trying to respond to the time of COVID-19. But what is, what is Valiente, brave in English? Brave is a comprehensive social intervention with the purpose of improving the empowerment of children and adolescents in the exercise of their sexual and reproductive rights. This initiative started in 2018 and will benefit for a period of around five years, more than 8,000 children and adolescents in the fourth, fifth and sixth grades in eight prioritized and very remote municipalities in Colombia. BRAVE is a program that promotes gender equality, equal relationships. Now, Lina, can you go back, please? Oops, thank you. So this program, um, as I was saying, promotes gender equality and equal relationships between girls. Um, and it's, it was built with direct articulation with Canada's feminist international assistance policies. To this end, it seeks to transform stereotypes, practices, and negative attitudes that prevent the guarantee of a girls and adolescents sexual and reproductive health and rights in this very complex context. Next, please. So how was Brave at Home born? Um, it emerged as a direct response to the challenges associated with the measures of physical isolation due to COVID-19. Uh, and what we did was try to maintain contact with all the program participants without abandoning the project's learning objectives, especially taking into account that most of the processes before the pandemic were face to face. It also seeks to empower and strengthen the agency capacity of nearly 8,000 children and teenagers on issues such as sexuality, gender, and sexual reproductive rights. So what we did was uh, we tried to separate it under three phases. And the development of these phases implied looking for distribution channels of the contents and other ways to reach the participating population, which is mo mostly rural, vulnerable, and with very low access to digital tools, information, and communication technologies. Just to give you an example, 90% of the families in Colombia 
in these areas do not have any access to internet of computers. So under phase one, what we did was um, the, try to, to find out ways to distribute the context via text messages. I, um, sorry, I think. Well, we try we develop the text messages and uh, and use of WhatsApp in order to invite children to learn and reflect on issues associated with sexual and reproductive rights, and also develop activities and challenges to develop a home with the help of their families. And I want and, and I want to emphasize here that this has become what we have seen is that this has become a space where families can interact with the girls and boys, their children and adolescents, taking into account conversations that revolve around different issues as they, from the ones that they usually see at schools. In phase two, uh, we develop and distribute a pedagogical material for work at home. It's a work, the one that you can see on the picture with colors that we deliver to the children. And this work would has, has exercises that will carry on until September, 2020. The activities that are reflected in the work week reinforce the context of the first phase that had already been developed in the last year and the research skills of the girls, the boys, and the teenagers. In phase three, what we seek in this phase is to a, pedagog a pedagogical closure of the brave strategy at home in order to prepare children to return to face-to-face -face activities plan in the case of Colombia for the month of October in case the isolation measures ends. However, in case the quarantine continues and there is a gradual return to face-to-face -face activities, for, for example, if not 100% of the students are able to go back to school, a teaching bag or an educational kit will be provided with new content, teaching material for playing and learning at home, and supplies for managing menstrual hygiene for girls and adolescents in times of pandemics. Next one, please. So what else have we done under uh, this COVID-19 um, Brave at Home? Uh, we develop a character, Bali. Who is Bali? Uh, it's a girl. Um, a character, and she will accompany the children and adolescents by delivering information, encouraging them to develop the challenges and activities that are proposed week by week in order to strengthen their knowledge in sexuality, gender, and rights, but also to develop and keep developing those research skills. The intention of Bali is to make it attractive to girls, but above all, to have a girl as the main character with an active voice close to them and with the courage to propose the development of other activities in the daily life of the people who participate in the program. I want you to hear to what Bali has to say about the program. Yes, the audio is not going. Did you did you put play? Um, just a second. She might be on mute. Hi, hi. You can can you hear? No, no, señora. Oh. We can hear you. I mean, uh, we, we can hear you, but and uh, I cannot speak like Bali. <laughs> no worries. Um, you can go on and just. Okay. Is yes. there any way to to do it work? No. Do you do I it um, on the on the 
on the um, I have to put it that on you the have maybe yes well it's saying David is saying that we have um, compartir el audio pantalla también poner pones el tu audio sin silenciar Lina Well, we'll, ha we'll send you the link on the, on the chat, on the WhatsApp, because it's not going. En el micrófono de la izquierda, parte inferior de las opciones, debe haber una que diga dejar el audio del computador. You know, sometimes it's difficult for a girl to, 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 to have her own voice. Right now, Bali. Hi, everyone. I'm Bali. I'm here to tell you what we've achieved so far with the Brave at Home strategy. We've got three main phases. On the first one, we'll send the information and challenges through text messages and WhatsApp. So far, the response has been incredible. We've got nearly 3,000 replies. On the second one, we made some worksheets with activities for them to do at home. Their families are now also involved and we are trying to clarify their knowledge about sexuality. On our third and final phase, we expect to close all of our previous TVs as well as slowly go back to face-to-face -face meetings at school. We also have a new Brave at Home kit. We made a lot of alliances with local schools, mass media, social media, and local media such as a community radio. That way, we are able to reach out to many more girls, boys, and teenagers in order to change their reality even while at the safety of our homes. Goodbye, everyone. This was Brave at Home. Thank you for your patience. So finally, Twin, what do we expect with a Brave at Home strategy to put definitely girls, boys, and teenagers at the center of the program to combine the new technological and communication technologies but also with the local communication um, tools that are available in these municipalities. And at the end, and the most important of all, to contribute to the lives and rights of 8,000 boys, girls, and teenagers in this municipality. Share with them knowledge and information in a fun, a creative way, empowering them about their rights so they might have a better future. Thank you. Wonderful. Thank you so much, uh, Marta, for this great session and insightful presentation. I think that I didn't introduce myself at the beginning of the, of the marketplace, but my name is David. I am a comms advisor at Core Group and also a PMNCH board member, and I am from Ecuador, actually. So seeing initiatives from Latin America is always very close to my heart, and I am very happy to, to see Valiente at home. Thank you so much. Uh, I think that there are no questions right now on the chat box, but 
I think that if you can share your contacts, uh, your contact details on the chat and also post the, the video, uh, that was great. That would be that would be perfect to encourage discussion outside of this marketplace. But thank you so much, Marta. Uh, I am now very happy to introduce Dennis Duve, uh, Grassroots Soccer uh, Global Partnership Monitoring and Evaluation Assistant and former coach, and Jeff DeSelles, Technical Advisor on Curriculum and Research from Grassroots Soccer. They will be sharing Tackling a New Opponent, Grassroots Soccer's Skills COVID-19 Resource Curriculum and their experience around this in South Africa. Over to you, Dennis and Jeff. All right, thank you so much. Uh, thanks for having us. Um, yes, I'm, I'm Jeff DeSells from Grassroots Soccer. I oversee uh, curriculum and training for Grassroots Soccer. And um, I'll be starting off. I'm, I'm just trying to figure out how to share my screen. How does that look? We can see. Okay, cool. All right, I'm trying to do full screen. If you uh, click on slideshow, there you go. Uh, in your in your toolbar, there you go. Great. Um, so we're going to be talking a little bit about grassroots soccer and also our response to, uh, to COVID-19. Uh, so grassroots soccer, uh, we're an adolescent health organization. Uh, we use the power of soccer to help young people live healthier lives. We, we initially started the organization in 2002 as an HIV prevention organization uh, where we would train famous professional footballers to engage young people in an interactive uh, HIV prevention curriculum. Uh, and through some initial assessments, we found that the approach worked quite well. Um, and at that stage, we, we started to, to scale up um, and working with not just famous professional players, but, but really any uh, caring adult role model. Um, so we now operate in directly in Zambia, Zimbabwe, South Africa. That's where we raise money. We, we directly implement programs with coaches. And then um, we work in more than 60 countries providing technical assistance. So in those instances, we'll provide a, a curriculum, a training, monitoring and evaluation support, but we don't put staff on the ground. Um, the grassroots soccer approach, uh, we, we measure our um, progress through what we call the three A's. So the first is building assets. So this is health knowledge and the confidence to use it. So like I mentioned, we started with HIV prevention. We've since then branched out to be more uh, inclusive of, of uh, broader adolescent health. Um, and a key component of that is accurate information. Um, the second A is access. So linking young people to health services in their community um, and trying to, to drive demand for those services. Uh, and that can range from um, family planning, contraception, to mental health services, um, to HIV screening and testing. Uh, really looking at, at the, the health problems in the community and the assets that are available um, and trying to link people um, to those health services. And the last A is adherence. So, so encouraging healthy behaviors and, and adherence to medical treatment. And how we do that, our model is really based on what we call the three C's. Uh, it's a soccer-based curriculum. It's supposed to be fun, game-based, and different than, than school, different than lectures. And uh, the coaches are, are engaging young people uh, themselves. Uh, so you'll talk to Dennis. Dennis is a former coach. And um, you'll see what a, what a, what a motivating and, um, and really relatable person he is. And the last is the culture. Um, you know, whether we're working in, in Ukraine or Tanzania um, or Chile, the program should look and feel like grassroots soccer. It should be fun. It should be a safe space. Um, and young people should be having vital conversations about their health. Um, so with that, I'm gonna hand it over to, to Dennis, um, who's gonna set up our conversation about COVID-19. Um, hi everyone, my name is Dennis Dube. Um, thank you so much, Jeff. Um, so to talk a bit about our curriculum in terms of um, what informed us to develop the 
COVID-19 response curriculum. Um, the fact that we believe that COVID-19 doesn't um, pose a serious health risk to adolescents and the communities they live in only, uh, but also exacerbates um, existing health challenges um, within the communities where our adolescents live in. So um, just to mention a couple of things which are on the slides um, around what we are hearing from our adolescent is that um, there's reduced access to health and social services, um, safe space, and um, widespread of um, misinformation, um, which causes fear, and also um, mental well-being um, being at a high risk. Um, so if you can see on the slide below is a, is a, um, a quote from um, one of our young coaches um, from Zimbabwe, um, which um, our coach shared when was asked um, how the, the COVID-19 pandemic has affected them. Um, so to, to share a bit of an example from the community which I specifically live in, um, there was a video um, that was trending via um, our so, um, social media platforms, um, WhatsApp, a video of a man who um, said um, all the COVID-19 test kits are infected with coronavirus and no one should, should um, agree to take the test whenever the healthcare workers come to our houses to test us and that instilled a lot of fear in a lot of people within the community and made a lot of people not to want to take those tests. Um, and through all of this, it, it, it showed a, a greater need um, of the curriculum to be um, developed and implemented within the communities which we work in. I'm going to hand it over back to Jeff to take us through the next slide. Thanks, Dennis. Um, so when, when COVID um, first came about, then, you know, we, we were obviously scrambling, I, th I think, like everyone to see, um, you know, how we would, would adapt our programming. Um, and, you know, our, our hunch was, was that um, our, our approach, which had been seen to be effective in sexual and reproductive health, um, malaria, um, and a you know, number of health topics, we, we wanted to contribute to, to the, um, the fight against COVID-19. And we thought the best way to do that was to address some of these concerns that, that Dennis was talking about, uh, address the misinformation, um, adolescent mental well-being, uh, connection to services, and, and using a similar sport-based approach. Uh, the problem, or the challenge, I should say, is grassroots soccer traditionally those are our programs in person, uh, and, and that that kind of coach-player relationship is 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 crucial to our programs. So um, you know, we we really started experimenting and innovating, um, and Dennis and I put together um, a, a trial curriculum. So it was a a three-session open-source curriculum uh, aimed at increasing knowledge, promoting healthy behaviors like um, like effective hand washing and you know sneezing into your elbow, um, and of course, uh, like I said, addressing mental well being. So we included some some evidence evidence based uh, mental well being practices, some breathing exercises that um, that we felt could could be effective. Um, it's the way that it was designed uh, is that it can be delivered in person. Um, because this is, we decided to make the curriculum open source um, to really anyone in the world that wanted to use it. Uh, so it can be delivered in person. So certain part partners of ours from, uh, from Malawi and Equatorial Guinea, when we wrote the curriculum, schools were still open and, and programs were still being delivered, while other, uh, our other partners, um, schools had already closed. Um, so it could be delivered in person. Uh, it could be delivered um, under sort of light social distancing guidelines where people have to be spaced um, two meters apart. And then it could also be delivered through phone um, or SMS or WhatsApp messages. Um, so we wrote it that it could, so that it could be very uh, flexible um, to meet the, the needs of our partners. So we launched in, in April. Um, and we included monitoring and evaluation tools for, for organizations to also assess their impact uh, at the same time. And um, it was a really new experience for us. We're used to developing curriculum specific to our partners' needs. 
And this time we, we wrote a curriculum that was uh, very generalizable. And, and like I said, it was open source. So any, any organization um, could download it and use it. And we've been really encouraged by the response. Uh, so since then, it's been translated into seven languages. It's been downloaded over 600 times by people from organizations in 35 countries. And um, it's been adopted or integrated by, by several governments. And I think, I think what's exciting is, is just getting the, the anecdotal feedback on the curriculum, um, you know, both big and small. So on the, on the big side, um, the, the government of Malawi, uh, three ministry departments have adopted it as, as their official COVID response for young people. And um, an Ethiopia uh, Ministry of Education, Ministry of Health are, are actually filming the curriculum to broadcast on national TV. Um, but what's kind of more exciting is, is the feedback from the, from the smaller organizations, um, you know, how it's been meaningful and how they've adopted the curriculum into their culture. And, um, you know, one of the activities in the curriculum is to create your own hand washing song or anthem. And we're, we're, seeing, uh, we're seeing these examples from, um, you know, just a, one that comes to mind is a, a small orphanage in Angola that, um, you know, created this anthem and sent us the video. And uh, another organization in Kenya who actually was able to use the COVID curriculum to continue providing uh, PrEP, uh, pre-exposure prophylaxis and other SRH uh, services to girls. Because at that time in Kenya, only COVID related activities were permitted to, to go forth. So kind of under, under the disguise of this COVID curriculum, this organization was able to continue providing services. So it's been really fascinating to see how people have used it. Um, we've, we've now, we're now wrapping up an assessment of the curriculum and should be releasing version two um, next week. Um, some lessons learned. Uh, we found that the, the adaptable nature was, was really well received. So not being too prescriptive because the, uh, the pandemic is changing daily. The government guidelines are changing. Um, and also, you know, what happens in, uh, in Paraguay is completely different than what's happening in Scotland or, or Tanzania. Uh, so allowing our partners to, to use their local information, what they know works to, to implement the curriculum. Um, we, we also found, um, we didn't find great uptake of the monitoring and evaluation tools. So we released the curriculum and the survey. Um, I think there was, it was a bit confusing how we did that. So we didn't really see great, um, great utilization of the survey. Uh, so we thought we'd see more, um, we'd get more findings on change in pre-post knowledge. So we had to rely more on, uh, on qualitative methods like interviews to get feedback. Um, but that being said, uh, we, we were able to, to provide some assessment. And I think um, another lesson learned is uh, the messages really, and, and I think this came through in the other two presentations today, is the messages had to be very catchy. Uh, they had to be fun. Um, uh, and they had to be sticky. They had to be something that sticks in your mind. So um, we had, uh, I think, a few slides back. Uh, we had the, the Do the Five. And this is from WHO. Um, and we, we kind of reiterated that messaging in the curriculum. Uh, and when we were doing the assessments, that, that really came through, that, that do the five message. Um, so we want to build on that, um, make sure everything's catchy and fun. And yeah, so like I said, I'll send a link uh, if anyone would like to download the curriculum. Uh, we also can provide training. Uh, so groups that are interested you can have the open source curriculum, of course, to, to implement as you see fit. Uh, we're also able to do training if it interests you, so please get in touch. Um, and yeah, so, so we're doing the review now. We received uh, reviews from a number of organizations, uh, including Partners in Health and WHO, and we're getting um, uh, UNESCO to review it now. And um, yeah, so we'll, re we'll release it next week. And I think that leaves us about five minutes uh, for questions. Yeah, Jeff, there are some questions in the chat. Maybe you can address them. Cool, let me just...
So I'm not seeing my. I can you can just end your end your screen share. Yeah, you have to stop the uh, share screen uh, the screen share. But how long does it take to complete the curriculum? For example, that's a question. Cool. Sorry, I'm not able to. Uh, my screen's going crazy. Um, There we go. Uh, so, sorry about that. The, uh, the curriculum is comprised of three sessions that, uh, that take about 30 to 45 minutes to complete. Um, so, so we found that, you know, whether it's in person or over the phone, it takes about 30 to, to 45 minutes. Um, but a number of organizations, we provided some example SMSs uh, and, and WhatsApp messages that can be sent to start dialogue. Um, so that's another form that it's taking. Um, that, that's a little bit um, more difficult to measure the, the duration, how long it takes. But originally designed for three sessions, 30 to 45 minutes. How do you promote coach response with the players through the curriculum? Um, Good question. I'm not sure exactly what you mean by, by coach response, um, but you know, we, we try to promote a, a dialogue. So the curriculum, even though it's open source and doesn't necessarily come with training, uh, we provide, we, we hope that um, what we've provided uh, enables a, a, a safe and, and fun interaction um, between the coach and the player. And to help enable that, we've, we've provided some additional resources. Um, the updated version includes guidance on, um, on adolescents and specifically for adolescents and, and COVID-19. Um, yeah, and, and, uh, and hopefully enough supplemental information that, uh, that the coach can, can, can interact and have a, a good thing going with the players. Um, just to, to add one thing as well, on our website, we also have um, videos um, of how a coach can um, deliver the, the program with um, participants. I think um, from one, when watching those videos, you can get an idea in terms of how um, a coach can interact with players and how they can respond to um, players in terms of questions that, that they might ask. Great. Another question that I see is that if you, if you have any evaluation of the results so far, uh, yes, uh, we do. And we've actually called it an assessment uh, because um, it, it was a very rapid assessment. Um, you know, we even, even maybe shy away from calling it an evaluation. But uh, so we did a mixed methods assessment uh, that was through the, the few pre-posts that we were able to receive, um, interviews with partner organizations and, and expert reviews, expert external, external reviews. Um, so we got a, we came up with a list of recommendations and actions that we take that inform the revisions. Um, so th that's probably not ready to share externally. Um, so we'll release the curriculum next week, uh, but we do plan on writing up uh, the assessment and, and the findings and what what influenced this next round. Perfect. Um, one other question that I see is: it is easy to get access to the curriculum from many place. Uh, yes, yeah, so it, it is, it, it's completely free. Um, um, it, it, um, yes, Haley, Haley, our, our colleague from Grassroots Soccer just sent the link. Um, so you can download that, um, it's completely free. And, and like I said, it's, it's been um, downloaded in 30, I think more than 35 countries so far. Amazing. Um... One question that I have is if you have also um, some kind of interaction or involvement with the ministries of health. Yeah, great question. Um, and and uh, I'll do my best to answer. I think Dennis can, can probably weigh in as well because he works in, in a number of these countries. But uh, our partner organizations have been working with the ministry. Um, this is building off existing relationships with, with the ministry. So in most places we work, um, either directly or through partners, we, we, we try to engage uh, Ministry of Health, Ministry of Education. Um, and a lot of times uh, we found that they, they needed something simple um, that addresses COVID-19, either in person or, uh, or through a phone-based model, or um, we've seen some partners take the content and put it in a magazine. Um, but we, what we found, I, I think in general, is where that relationship with the ministry existed, 
this this curriculum seems to fit in. Uh, we haven't really seen instances where where no no relationship previously existed and this helped form it. But where that relationship exists, I think this tool can can help strengthen uh, be, the relationship between a partner organization and and ministry departments. Great. Do you want to add anything else, Dennis? Um, no, I'm all good. Jeff covered everything. Thank you. Perfect. So we're very good on timing. And thank you so much, Jeff and Dennis, for your great presentations. I really enjoy it. Um, uh, PMN Stage is working right now on a well-being framework for adolescents. So I think that it would be great to also get you involved in this consultation process as well as the development of the framework. I know that we will be following up with you over email probably. Um, so yes, thank you so much everyone for joining the marketplace. I hope that you really, I hope that you enjoyed this as much as I did. Uh, thank you so much to IFM State, to YNFPA, to also Pro Familia, and also for, to Grassroots Soccer for the for for this time, and also for your work on the country level uh, for COVID nineteen, particularly working with the young people who are facing more challenges to access the services that they need and they deserve also. So I think that it is time for us to go back to plenary. Um, if you were already there, you know how to get there, but the, you have to go to the website, um, lifesinthebalancesummit.org, and you will be able to see the plenary and the last uh, and the closing ceremony as well as, we will also have some uh, networking after this that we'll call it like a virtual happy hour. So hope to see you there and also to exchange more contacts and, and information. Thank you so much for joining. See you on the plenary. <laughs>